they just told me that there was interest in Pakistan for you know developing a similar system. So I wanted to just kind of walk everyone through it. So if you have questions, interrupt. It's very good. I worked in sexual harassment for uh, an NGO since 2005 in Egypt, and um, I, I moved to Egypt in 2004, so I've been there for a little while. It's my home now. And my friends and I just decided to start this because um, nothing else was being done that was really changing things in our day-to-day -day lives. So there was a lot of work being done on the advocacy level. but it wasn't changing anything for, for us when we walk out of the door. So um, that's the background behind it. Um, the, the technology functions on, on two pieces of, of freeware, uh, Yushikiri, which everyone knows about these days, I think, and Frontline SMS. And uh, so what you see is kind of the, the results of this. The first step is, is a reporting system. <laughs> report sexual harassment by SMS on, on the web form uh, and uh, Twitter, Facebook, email, however they want. Uh, each report receives a response with a referral to services that already exist and are offered for free by NGOs, by women's NGOs, but no one knows about the, the services, so we've tried to promote them. Um, and then all the reports are, are mapped on our on our homepage, on a map of Egypt, and you can zoom in. I wish it took maybe I'll sit over here. <laughs> I want to show you the yeah. platform. Um, so you can you can it's zoom in to uh, Cairo or different neighborhoods and um, see the reports that are existing there. Less, uh, and then we, we use the, the website and the map for, well, for one thing, awareness, because we still have a problem with people taking it seriously. <laughs> uh, and uh, when they see the map, they don't have to read anything. They don't have to like decipher statistics. And also, it's, um, it's kind of personal. Um, the, the reports are sent by people, and they're not censored or anything. Kind of for awareness purposes, it's kind of cool because um, you can click on each red dot and see the text of the report. So you can read directly what, what people are saying. And um, it's it's kind of shocking, actually. <laughs> um, it shocks people because they, they think that women are just complaining a lot, that people are calling us beautiful and giving us compliments and telling us we're sweet and we're being hysterical and yeah, like complaining. And then they, they read the information and they see that it comes not from you know the American University in Cairo or like these high class places, but it comes from all over Egypt, villages, poor areas, slums, and they see the reports that people write and they're graphic. And people aren't used to hearing women curse, they're not used to hearing women name parts of their body and say someone touched me here. Um, <laughs> They're not used to, you know, these very explicit kind of comments, and so when they when they see this and they see that it's coming from like a very conservative area, for example, they really start to take the issue seriously. So this is one aspect. But for our use uh, as the group of volunteers that we are, the thing that we uh, we do the most of is um, using the map to target areas for community outreach. So we don't want it to just be a website with, you know, red dots all over it. We we gather volunteers, so many people from all over Egypt, about 300 or 400 people from all over Egypt have wanted to, to volunteer on this issue, like for this cause, kind of. Um, and so what we do is we get them together and ask them to organize in their neighborhoods, days where they take their friends or their colleagues or who or the other people that have volunteered from their areas and go person to person uh, and address people who have a presence in the street. So shop owners, 
the police guy who's just standing there, not doing much. Um, the, the guy who parks the cars, the, the doorman, like the people that are hanging around in the street and have kind of like a control over the neighborhood. We, the, our volunteers go and talk to them about the issue. So they open it up for, for discussion and we prepare them with some facts to counteract some common arguments like it's the way the woman's dressed or that um, it has to do with the economy or something. We, we prepare them with some facts to discuss this openly. But then in the end, what's really important for us is to ask them to do something. So um, back 20, 30 years ago in Egypt, people did something. If they saw someone harassing someone else, they would chase him down and um, shave his head as a <laughs> sign of shame. Um, and we're not asking for that. We're asking people to just like be watchful and not ignore what's going on. And then to, to say something, to say that's inappropriate. This isn't tolerated in our neighborhood. And so our goal is to do this in enough places and to recruit enough community members on our side that the environment in the street won't tolerate sexual harassment anymore. Um, because this is what we think is the real problem, that people are letting it happen, people are ignoring it and letting it happen. Like this is a page that was requested by people. So on the on the top we've got you know the NGOs that, that give services, so anyone can call them and they don't have to you know go through our system or anything. Have to make a police report, self defense classes. Uh, tips from people about what works for them on an individual level. Uh, <laughs> this one's my favorite. It, it's from my partner, actually my, my best friend, uh, a partner in the uh, She has this like glare, this look that she gives people, and it's really effective. It's amazing, um, and it looks very much like. Them. Well, I'm scared. <laughs> I know, right? But they um, like these guys that harass. Um, they don't expect you to like confront them, they expect you to be shy or like uh, stay quiet or run away or be afraid. And when you like make eye contact and you look at them like this, <laughs> it really has an effect. You have to practice it. Yeah. <laughs> Self defense. Why is um, you know, just just some tips, what works, what doesn't work. Take back the tag. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we try and do that. We're also recording self-defense videos for, for girls who can't come to class. Um, so there's a bunch of random things like that that we try and incorporate. And uh, we're also trying to respond to the extra kind of requests that, that we've gotten since we started, which, so I don't forget anything, includes um, in the community outreach, uh, about 600 schools have requested uh, community outreach to be done in the schools via NGOs that are working in the schools. Um, mass transportation, a lot of women have requested that we do outreach to taxi drivers, to um, bus drivers, micro bus drivers, and ask them to create safe vehicles. So we're working with our pro bono lawyers now to try and like make a system where we copy their ID cards and make them sign a contract so that we can hold them legally responsible if they violate their agreement to be a safe area. Um, there are these community neighborhood safety groups that popped up after the revolution, or during the revolution, actually, when the police disappeared. Um, they're called the Gansh Area. And uh, a lot of them are still existing and have requested to, to start doing sexual harassment outreach. And um, a lot of people from outside Cairo uh, maybe 15 governorates outside Cairo in rural, rural areas. Um, globalization, like yourselves. Um, a lot of countries have requested press map in their country, so we're trying to help with that. We're not being very good at it <laughs> yet, but we're trying. Um, and we need to get better at like our, our social media outreach. As you can tell, we're not the most skilled. Um, with, with, uh, with WordPress and, and knowing how to do all of this stuff. We're still learning. We're trying to make a mobile app, a smartphone app. We're starting a research unit, also by request, um, to try and figure out like what factors are influencing people's reporting habits. 
so why people are are reporting by the web more often than they report by SMS, for example. Yeah, and for the globalization, we're trying to package the technology so it's easily downloadable and make a best practices guide so that we can try and give some kind of like moral support as well as just the technology. So that's it. So that's like a, an overview, and I just wanted to give you that and then open it up for conversation. Because we can learn a lot from you, and um, if you have any questions, sexual harassment is only for women who are wearing mini skirts in the streets. Yes. <laughs> so we interview old women, we interview men, we interview men who harass, men who like protect people from harassing, uh, women who are dressed all sorts of ways from all sorts of classes and backgrounds and it, edit it together with statistics. So um, like the misconceptions, the, the people talking, and the statistics together. Uh, this is, it's not quite done. We have the filming done and the initial editing, but um, all the statistics aren't put in yet. I, I missed the first few minutes. Uh, did you, you said in your earlier talk, panel discussion, that the perpetrator's names are are publicized. Some people do that. We don't edit the reports. I'll show you the reports. Can you show me a couple of reports? And sure. There's actually a lot of English ones today. <laughs> so, uh, this is the, the admin site. Um, and it shows, like this is when we log in, yeah, the, the raw reports, so before they're approved. Um, Oh yeah, the number is something four hundred something. So this um, this is one. You can also see it actually on the main page. I, I don't need to do that. Um, on the main page, the reports are listed as well. For so, uh, others, everybody to see. Yeah, for everybody to see. If you scroll down, you see it's. <laughs> we don't censor, so. It can be a little, um, uh, so if you click on them, um, you can see the, uh, the full text of the report. We ask people to tell us what happened before. Uh, can guys report their Yes. yes. Anyone can report harassment. <laughs> Our criteria are that it be sexual. Like, we don't deal with harassment for other reasons. Um, yeah, this one didn't mention the name, but some of them do. Um, so there were two men. That, there were two men that reported harassment. Um, and we have about 50% men in our volunteers, so maybe 150 or 200 men. And um, some of them have told us anecdotally that they also experienced harassment. So it happens. And we want to change our language, actually, because now you see our site's pink. <laughs> and we talk about like the girls making reports and the women making reports. Um, we're trying to change that. It's something that we're interested in because it just came out. Like, just a couple weeks ago, it was the first time we, we really it clicked in our heads that, that men being harassed is actually an issue. an issue, yeah. So it's something I'm talking a lot about now just because it's new. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of doctor incidences, schools, family, taxis, like prosecution, like on the legal front. Like, what I think you guys do there? Because I, I would think convictions and people going to prison would be a great. Issue. Yeah, um, there was only one successful court case against sexual harassment in two thousand eight. Um, we don't have a legal structure that really allows prosecution. It's there. We have laws that apply to sexual harassment, but they're not direct, so no one thinks of them. And the police don't really enforce it that much. And anyway, the way the law is structured, in order to make a police report, you have to catch the guy and get his ID card and take him physically to the police station, which, um, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you guys you probably have this experience. It's impossible. So the only reason this this one girl, she's a friend of mine, um, and 
the only way she was able to, to make the police report was she physically hung on to the guy for like two hours until her dad arrived to bring him physically to the police station. So that's the, that's the one case. And she won, and that's fantastic. And after the case, there were 900 arrests in the street, but it's, it comes and bursts. It's not really normal. Uh, what is the source of finance for this project? Uh, are you running some ads or something? <laughs> All free, yeah. volunteer. Yeah, I um, I bought the computer. My friend Inji got the USB and pays for all of the um, outgoing SMSs to people, giving them the, the referral to services. Um, these cards Inji printed, I printed the Why stickers. Why don't you any organization in Egypt so that they can come and see you? Um, we didn't want to wait. The bureaucracy is really difficult. Um, to register, to get money, you have to be a registered NGO. And if you register as an NGO, it can take years, but also you're under the control of the government. And you have to take permission for everything you do, and they can tell you at the last minute, no way. So you end up spending money on like a workshop or something, and then they cancel it, and you've just wasted a bunch of money and can't report to your donor. Um, we don't have a staff, we don't have an office. Um, so we don't have the infrastructure to deal with the bureaucracy, for the permissions and everything. And we didn't want to wait for it. So we just decided, whatever, we'll handle it. It's, it's free software, and so we get a lot of support pro bono. Okay, so do you keep a check on the fake reports? Like some people just put something just for fun? Yeah, I can show you something that they're not very nice. Um, they, uh, we don't have a lot, but they're there. And a lot of them say things like, a man grabbed me today in the street and I really liked it, so I don't know what to do, please help me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, so, so fake reports like aren't that much of a problem. We just like get them, we read them, and we ignore them. Um, we approve the ones that, uh, that are real. It's all moderated? Sorry? Everything is moderated? Yeah. In this admin section, we read every report. Because not only do we get fake reports sometimes, but we also get um, problems with the mapping. Because uh, our addresses are, are not very easy. Like, we don't know the street address most of the time. So we can't enter, like, you know, number five streets, whatever. Um, we say next to the Kentucky Fried Chicken, in this neighborhood, uh, two doors down. <laughs> um, so it's difficult. Plus, we have English, Arabic, and like this half-half language, where we use like a combination of English script and numbers, but the but it, it's in Arabic. So, so we have to check on all of this stuff and read it and make sure it's correct. If I understand the context very well, um, uh, in, in context of women in Pakistan, if they are bold enough to report an harassment, why wouldn't they go for a local police station or an authority in local? And but this is anonymous, right? Is this anonymous? Yeah, yeah, this is anonymous. So it doesn't require Sometimes anonymous. people put their information, but we don't publish it. So what's the reason of publishing on harassment? Uh, are we going to take any action against it? Yeah, I mean, not on an individual level because we lack the legal infrastructure. So there are other organizations dealing with the legal infrastructure. We're not. Um, but uh, what we're trying to do is to move along like the social response. So our goal is not to change the law, although that would be lovely, but our goal is to change the social acceptability of harassment. So what we see as the problem is that when there are you know, in normal life in the street, or in the workplace, or the home, or anywhere. Like, the, the problem that we see is that everyone lets it happen. People ignore, and they blame the victim, and they just like let it go. Oh, thank you. We try to, to deal with, um, with society, and what we've found working on this issue yeah, over the last couple of years is that when society is involved and doing this, the law follows, the government follows. The government 
never really leaves. <laughs> uh, my name is Mel, and uh, we are working on a social disaster relief system. Uh, I told you earlier, it is some a platform written from scratch. <laughs> I just want to ask you: You're using you charity. What is the limitation? But I mean, do you have any limitation? You feel like uh, some features that you charity must have that would have been you working on your website. Yeah, um, <coughs> there are some there are some weaknesses in Yushihiri. Uh, for example, the language and the, the address problem. Like it's not automatic for us. If we were in the states, the all the reports would be mapped automatically, and we wouldn't have to have an admin page and read every single one and make sure it matches the location of the map. Because Yushihiri is better with the geotagging, and their language works better. <laughs> but our language doesn't work so well. And um, we had to do a lot of work on, on geothermy. So you probably have to do the same thing, I'm guessing. Or uh, how are you promoting this project? Because I just saw on Facebook that it has only 30 minute plans. So how are you promoting this project? Yeah, actually that's more than I thought we had. <laughs> um, uh, something around 12, 90 and 20. Oh, OK. Yeah, we, um, we do the best we can. Um, we're, we have no money, you know? Yeah, um, word of mouth. Like one thing we, we try to do is we printed these cards because we know our phone number is really hard to remember. So our reporting information, we, we print it on cards that people can keep in their wallets. Um, <laughs> so they don't have to remember the number. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we do, it, we, we try and you know, go to events like this or local events, we, we are invited to speak with a lot of NGOs, you know, at different cultural things or social things or um, workshops that they have featuring us. Um, we have a lot of media coverage. I don't know why, but we do. And um, and we we have Facebook, we tweet, um, and I, I don't know. There's just like a word of mouth buzz. Yeah, it's just if a woman is harassed and she reports here, and another woman talks to her, they find her. You, you don't need to market this. Um, I mean, you need to generate awareness, but I would think that two women uh, would talk a lot more than a marketing story. Yeah, I mean, we need like to do more. Yeah, issues like this. And if you guys have a, a suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Oh, we just have no we, resources. Yeah. In our work, we can just tweet about it. Yeah. Would the uh, attack on the CBS Sports Fund a lot? Oh, did, yeah. Did that, did that have any impact on the debate in Egypt? Or what did you yeah, it was really depressing. Like, um, during the revolution, harassment almost disappeared in the first couple days. Like, it was a transformation that happened just overnight, and it wasn't coordinated, nothing. It's just in neighborhoods, people got like very active about protecting the safety of their neighborhood, the dignity of their neighborhood, the, you know, they, they had a personal connection to it. All the men went into the streets and made weapons from like, whatever they could find in the street to like make checkpoints and control the safety. Uh, so in those first days, everyone was talking about it. There was like very little harassment going on. And in the Tahrir, like the place of the, the, main, the center of town where the demonstrators were staying, um, it stayed very low, the harassment, and people were like intervening. Um, there was one story that, um, like, my friend told me, uh, there were there was a couple. I think they were just friends, but there was a man and a woman, um, and one was really tired, and so like rested his head on her shoulder or something, and someone came up, actually like a Muslim Brotherhood kind of guy. It came up and was like, I'm really really sorry. Is he bothering you? And she was like, no. I was like, oh, okay, that's good, and walked away. But this kind of thing never used to happen. <laughs> so there was a really good feeling during the revolution, and then the Laura Logan incident happened, and it broke everyone's heart. Um, it was the first really kind of embarrassing, horrible, disgusting thing to happen after the, the revolution that wasn't being perpetrated by the government. <laughs> So um, so everyone was really sad, 
and tons of like Facebook groups came up. We got lots of volunteers. People got really active. And after the revolution in general, people are more socially active. They're cleaning up the trash. There, there's environmental groups, there's different social groups, there's a bunch of sexual harassment groups. We're trying to kind of coordinate stuff so that you know we're more effective and it gets sustained. But um, yeah, it, it was really sad. People were really upset. I may be going upset slightly different but obviously, I mean, the level of sexual harassment and the Can come along and 
add more details through already added features. So yeah. we try to map the main thing, that's the main roads, highways, and uh, uh, cafes, new yeah. airline yeah. offices, the so banks, all the yeah. main, and then let other people from community then add in all the other. And maybe we have started adding in that parties as well. That's so so that was one yesterday. Yeah. You should have gone to that. Uh, yeah. 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 That's really interesting. I'm going to have to go and ask about this. I don't think we do that. We don't have to do a mapping party. Uh, Google and yeah. Google, Google is already fun. doing that. So <laughs> what we're talking about is uh, the mapping parties are being arranged for the mapping. So we already have really rich maps for a lot of cities in Pakistan. So, so if you use a Google map instead of uh, yeah, yeah. Google Maps, usually uses Google Maps. Okay. Uh, so I'm not sure. You should use the engine that puts together yeah. the reporting. I don't know how you show it works, but uh, if if you can integrate Google Maps, if if, if it is already integrated, so that would be awesome because uh, most of the maps are uh, actually translated in Urdu, so they uh, the localization would not be a problem. Yeah, that's perfect. So yeah, yeah, I think because because uh, usually at least our institution use Google Maps. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.